welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. It's so good. There we go. Now we're going to go live. <laughs> it's so good to be here. Okay. It's so good to be here with you all. This is amazing. Technology and technology. Well, guess what? It is it is March 1st. I believe we are just moving forward in life. And frankly, life is, gives us all kinds of things um, that we are <laughs> challenged with. And then how we overcome, how we deal with those small little rocks, with those small little pebbles in our life is exactly what this is all about. Today, I have an incredible, incredible guest. And why am I saying this incredible? Because first of all, it's March 1st. Second, we are entering into this International yeah. Women's Month, right? And no other than wanting to share this time with someone who is also in my field and everything. And today is real talk. So we're going to do real talk, real talk about life, real talk about success, empowering as women, and also my favorite subject, which is hypnosis and hypnotherapy. With that said, I'd like to introduce Zoilida Grant. Hi, Zoilida. Hello, how are you today? I am absolutely wonderful. How are you? Good. You climbed the mountains of the challenges and you made it to the summit. Yes, we do. We do. You know, one of the things about me is I am tenacious. <laughs> I don't give up. <laughs> so allow me to share a little bit about you. Just read a small little a snippet of your bio and the rest we're going to put everything in there and people can go and look at your bio afterwards but for now Zolita has been involved in the human development for over 40 years yes she looks young but over 40 years she's been doing this she graduated from UC Berkeley in 1971 with a BA in psychology and got her MSW from UTEP in 1979 She's had the privilege of managing two nonprofits. I need to talk to you about this. Definitely. The nonprofits were YMCA in El Paso, Texas, and a drug and alcohol program in Belafonte, Ohio. So other than a short period of working in the drug and alcohol corporate, she was a trainer. And her entire profession has been in a private practice. She's worked for over 35 years as a psycho psychotherapist, specializing in hypnosis. And uh, now for the last 12 years, she's been doing something that I think it's your signature, hypno coaching. That's, that's when you started. And I remember when all that came down and you were doing all this. So which led her to do this in Colorado. So, uh, and that's where you are. So she served as the president uh, of our hypnotherapy uh, hypnosis examiners for the last uh, six years. And she's a former uh, VP. And her six-figure success coaching training begins in 2023 that I am so happy and I may be part of this. So with further ado, Zolita, I wanted to share about this because I want to talk about hypnosis. I know you talk about being a psycho psychologist, a psychotherapist in that field. That's how you started. So how did you come to incorporate hypnosis in your practice? And then we can go and talk about the rest of the things. Okay, so I think about what I do. I think of myself as being a success coach. And a success coach means that I am focused on my client's success in all areas. I use a really unique combination of tools and techniques of coaching with the power and the punch of hypnosis to clear subconscious blocks, 
to change the mindset and to help people achieve goals. I don't do any therapy at all now. I focus completely on goal achievement, performance goals, learning goals, fulfillment goals. As long as it's a goal, I can help you make it happen. Beautiful. So when you talk about your coaching uh, program, that mindset for success, do you believe success is something that we achieve? uh, Or is that like, uh, it's a part of us and everyone can achieve that success and overcome the blocks and everything? And are the blocks mental? Or are the blocks mostly emotional? So when we talk about success, it's definitely individualized. Mm. The goal is to help someone have the entire wheel of life feel successful. Your career, your personal life, your finances, your health, your relationship. I would like to have you have a full, rich life in all areas. So once an individual determines what is their success picture, what stands between them and success is in the mind. You know our mind is 85% subconscious and only 15% conscious. When they disagree, the subconscious always wins, always wins. And so when we get those blocks out of the way, and those blocks can be in the feelings and in the emotions, those blocks can be in the belief system. So they can be thoughts and they can be feelings, but the secret is always to get them out of the subconscious and to help the subconscious support the conscious goals. Right. As a hypnotherapist, uh, I still do therapy. I still do one-on-ones and Uh, delving with the subconscious mind and tapping in there, which I truly, as you said, it's the reservoir. So once we change the mindset, and I call it mindset reset from the subconscious mind, that's when the conscious and the subconscious, when they meet and they merge and we have the yes. So how do you work with clients to create that mindset for the success Do you still use hypnosis for that? Use hypnosis, but I use hypnosis in a different way. One of the things that, so let's just carefully take a look at what are three things that are different between hypnotherapy and hypnotic coaching. Hypnotherapy has a tendency to work from the present to the past, to clear things out of the past, to get you be more successful in the present. And well, we also bring it back to forward. Yes, well, we need to bring it back to forward. With hypnotic coaching, we're always focused on what is the goal? What is the goal? And so we only deal with past content to clear those blocks. We never really examine them. I refer them to you if they're needed to do that but we move towards the future. So there's a different process, okay? There's a difference in the clientele. Mm. People that do hypnotic coaching do not identify they need therapy. Right. They're not thinking that they have problems to be fixed. They have a desire to to have extraordinary life. Oh, I like that extraordinary life instead of a better life. I love that. Yeah. The third difference is it's a different kind of relationship. The therapeutic Mm. relationship is always unequal in the sense that the therapist is the one. I know that as a really conscious hypnotherapist, you are aware that the seat of the power is really in the client, but in that model, you are still the one that really is kind of in charge of the process. Coaching is co-created, where the client and I get together and we create the plan to get them where they want to be. I, I validate what you just said, 
And as I, in retrospect, I believe I do work with my clients as a guide, like on a bridge versus I have, I am the master of the hypnotherapist. Yes. So, uh, okay, I'm going to ask you another question. As someone who has worked in the field of drug, alcohol, um, what I call there's those of us who, instead of delving in and bring it all out and dealing with stuff, most people, even success, it's some things that it's the self-esteem and the self-consciousness. And so many people numb their feelings with what I call eating, smoking, drinking, you know, um, whatever the negative things. So because I have not worked with alcohol and drug, has hypnosis, is hypnosis a valid modality, a therapy to when you were working with drug and alcohol, was it as powerful as doing in, in the rehabs and everything? I would it's never tapping in there and working with the trauma aspect of it, of what they suppress. So please share. So I would always look upon hypnosis as a support service. And I would have a tendency to favor more traditional <laughs> treatment modalities and to build self-esteem, to build confidence to build decision-making. Beautiful. So as always, I say what we do is an augmentation. Yes, definitely. Definitely. But for hypnotic coaching clients, and hypnotic coaching clients is not everyone. Hypnotic coaching clients are people that have achieved a certain level of acceptance with their family of origin issues that have achieved a certain level of success in their life and now they're wanting the gold medal now they're able to step onto that olympic podium and to say i want that extraordinary life those are the kinds of people that are attracted more to coaching Okay, so what are some of the skills and the habits that a successful person needs to incorporate or um, adapt? So when I think about success, I always talk about the fact there's the inner game and the outer game. And that's the one of the things that's wonderful about my six-figure uh, success coaching training program is it works with the inner and the outer game. And the outer game is your skills and abilities that you do in the world. The inner game is how do you manage yourself? How do you manage time, money, and energy? How do you get yourself to be self-motivated? You know, self-discipline is actually a more important component than, than inspiration when we're talking about motivation. Okay. Granted, there is a lot of people who want to be successful, and I think um, success is a perception. Everybody has a different perception of what success is. Right, and that's why I said it's a personal choice. It's yeah. a personal choice, but once you make that personal choice, what stands between you and, accept and getting there? You have to go through the subconscious mind. True. Because no matter what it is, it's that little inner child, the inner voice that it's like as a DV consultant, as a domestic abusive consultant, you know, it's people are surprised that why doesn't she leave? the relationship she leaves and then comes back she leaves and then comes back it's because there there is 
there is a need or what we perceive um, we haven't overcome the blocks or have that that stamina to say I can do this on my own and for whatever reason even in that kind of a relationship it's a love-hate relationship and the people in that relationship love one another so when we talk about success everyone says I mean people have gotten millionaires and then they've gone broke so they built it, built it, and then they've gone broke. So is that something that it's in the subconscious that does not believe I'm good enough to be at that level or stay at that level? Absolutely. So many people have self-defeating patterns. You know, mm. think that you deserve it. You shoot yourself in the foot when you cross the finish line. So okay. We have to build that sense. You know, if, if we were looking at really kind of what are hypnosis genres, there are different aspects of hypnosis. What I essentially do is peak performance. Right. Performance not about playing golf, but peak performance about playing life. Okay. And so it's like, you know, in that wheel of life, I would want people to be at at least the 80th percentile of satisfaction because that's all you be like. Wouldn't you want I... Got it. Yeah. Okay. So when we talk about building self-esteem, I mean, anyone can listen to a motivational thing and say, I'm building my self-esteem. I'm setting powerful goals and everything. But it's about consistency. It's about doing it day in, day out and making it, this is what I want. This is, I mean, people who come over here and say, even as a hypnotherapist, when they come and say, like, I want to lose weight. And I'm going, why? right? Why do you need to lose the weight? Why do you want to stop smoking? Why now? Because no matter what it is, the success, that success, the, the bottom line, when you achieve it, you achieve it for a reason. And that reason has to be something that it's like the biggest reward. That's what you want it and it gives you this sense of pride and satisfaction having it, right? Absolutely, yes. So as a business coach, from a standpoint, how small of a business can profit from coaching? Because someone will, will turn around and say, you know, I can't afford it. So one of the things that happened to me last year or when the pandemic began was I had a very successful local practice that was primarily made up of just wonderful local women that I worked with in many different areas. When the pandemic happened and I closed my office, I actually lost all of those clients. They just basically said, we'll come back when you open your office. So I went out and hired a coach that was many more times the cost than my mortgage payment. But she was- I know who it was. An extremely effective coach that specializes in high ticket sales. Yeah. And I've been working with her ever since. And essentially what happened was I pivoted, I got on Zoom, I opened nationally and internationally, I raised my fees twice, I developed high ticket items, I learned her different kinds of techniques, and I have the most successful business I've ever had in my life. And I'm one person. She <laughs> is tax deductible. And I think if you're in business, you need a coach. Right. What has been the biggest obstacle in your life that you had to overcome? And as a woman, as a human being, not necessarily as a coach or anything else. 
I would say the absolute biggest challenge in my life was the sudden death of my beloved husband in 2014. Because he was my business partner in helping me run my hypnotherapy school, which I ended up closing. He was my social partner. We had a wonderful social life going to plays and symphonies and all of that ended because it turned out that my part was buying the tickets online and his part was driving and parking. <laughs> so being able to pick myself up when I actually just felt like dying and create a new life was the most challenging thing I ever did in my life. So did you feel that you are alone? I know you have children, but did you feel like, how do I do this? How can I manage it? Where do I start? How do I, the, the, the feeling of grief and loss, I know for years you talked about it. And uh, when we got together and uh, it was during the conferences, uh, it was his anniversary, uh, his, the anniversary of his death and you were sad and you, it's, it's amazing that how, what was the strength? Who was the person that held your hand, how did you manage to start living again? I think it was my faith in my purpose in life. Mm. So, like, I, I did a really intense vision quest when I was 21 years old. And What I, exactly is that? So vision quest is where you go out to find your own communication with God as you know God and receive some kind of purpose and vision for your life. Mm. I went and fasted in the desert of Northern Mexico. Wow. And climbed a mountain in Guatemala. And I went to the sea in El Salvador, and then I helped someone save their life. And out of that, I came with a real definite sense of purpose that my job was to help the evolution of humanity through transforming consciousness. And so when I was in that place of personal despair, I said, what is my purpose in life? And how can I do my purpose in life? And that's what got me through. Do we all have to go on that kind of a journey to find our purpose? I think that we have to go on an inner journey Mm. not necessarily have to make it as extreme but you know I grew up in Berkeley California during the 60s so <laughs> extremely. but I do think that there is the process of inner searching to bring us to that place where we find our sense of purpose okay I, I love this journey, journey of journey within. I talk about a journey within and a journey to explore. I believe every seminar, every get together, every relationship, every loss, um, it it helps us grow as who we are. And especially, and I don't want to say women, but because this is Women's International Month, the month for recognizing even whatever it is happening in the world right now, especially in Ukraine, all the women who have joined forces to support and everything. It's like it's this beautiful hub of uh, I call women the power within. So um, as we generate this what who was the biggest influencer in your life my grandmother. and your grandmother no question my grandmother my grandmother was my salvation I unfortunately did have a lot of abuse in my childhood so my grandmother's house were where was where I always went to refuge my grandmother <laughs> not want me to feel victim 
victimized by my experiences. And so she would say things like, you know, don't cry because you don't have shoes. There are people in the world without feet. And then she would cook a bunch of food and she and I would take it in picnic baskets to the hobo camp. There was a hobo camp. Ah. And we would take food to the hobos and feed them. And it helped me to like stay in this place of recognizing that this was not really going to be my life. This was, was only a piece of my life and that I would be able to move on from this. My grandmother was inspiration. My grandmother was always, you know, this too will pass away. You can have a better life. It's so beautiful that you said that because my grandmother was uh, the one who literally gave me wings. Yes in self-esteem, even though she was the matriarch in our family and the dictator, and yet I got my wings and I'm very much like her. Um, what are the, if you could name two or three books that have made an impact in your life that you also recommend to others, what would those be? They can grow rich. Oh, um, of course. Um, the Celestine Prophecy by James yes. Redman. And I think for a third book, I would say your very own journal. Your very <gasps> get in the process of journaling. I've been journaling on and off for like 50 years. Wow. I begin every single morning by lighting a candle that is my gratitude candle. I write in my journal, you know, March 1st morning, and I write, I am a conscious creator. And then I list three things I'm grateful for. And then I finish up by saying, everything always works out for me. And then that is You know, you just simply answered my next question was, do you have rituals? <laughs> I have rituals. <laughs> I have morning rituals, evening rituals, solstice rituals, full moon rituals, new moon rituals. I'm very ritual. <laughs> Yes, and you're very also connected with the universe and the things that are happening with the universe. Is this something that is culturally uh, a part of your culture or is this something that you cultivated for Zoilida? I believe that we all have intuitive gifts. My intuitive gifts have been very strong in my life. My grandma taught me to read tarot cards when I was 11. Oh. So I have always been reading tarot cards, which build your intuition. I have very, very powerful, sometimes prophetic dreams. And mm. so it takes me into that spiritual world. I believe everyone does have intuition. It's just a matter of acknowledging it and developing habits to help make it happen. Beautiful. So for those who want to start in the field of hypnotherapy, in the field of hypno coaching, in the field of the working with the powers of the subconscious, because I'm truly blessed in the work that I do, especially with our organization and everything that you, we both served. Um, what is one thing that you can say as, uh, as words of wisdom to those who want to start? Because not the ones who go, <laughs> it's like I have this thing about, please don't go on a weekend cruise and come and tell me you're a hypnotherapist. <laughs> 
I think hypnosis, it's always good to remember there is art and science. And the science of hypnosis is pretty straightforward and people can learn it in two or three days. The art of hypnosis is magical. The art of hypnosis is being able to weave through all those different levels of subconscious with words and patterns and images and people transformation is so I would encourage anyone that wanted to get into the field to recognize that this is the age of consciousness we are going mm -hmm. in. And people that practice hypnosis are like midwives of consciousness. And they are helping people to birth themselves into new levels of thinking and being in the world. Beautiful. So in closing, as we are coming to a close, I'd like to end our talk with this question. Please complete the sentence. Zoe Lida is. Evolving. Seeking to be inspiring and intending to work for another 10 or 15 years. Kudos to you, my lady. Kudos to you. So I, I want to say thank you very much for your time. I know you do have a client, but it's always a pleasure being there. You have been a mentor. You have always been someone that you and I have collaborated on many levels. And um, will I see you at the conference in September? In September, I'm going to be in Crete. And I'm going to join my, my daughter and son-in-law in Crete. And then we're going to do a tour of Egypt. So I will miss it this year, unfortunately. Well, then I wish you a bon voyage. And if uh, we connect, we definitely connect via this uh, format. I call it uh, Facebook. So with that, thank you so much, Zoilida. God bless you for the work that you do. And thank you for being a guest on Heal Real Talk. Tuesdays with Lisa. Okay, we're going to end. Thank you. Bye-bye. And with that, I want to thank each and every one of you who has been here, uh, being present. Look forward to having you join us again next week on Heal Talk Tuesdays. This has been Real Talk with Lisa. God bless you and may the universal light surround you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.